Hi, I'm Lori Schoonmaker, Market President of National Markets here at Highmark. Welcome back to Hitting a Higher Mark. This podcast explores topics that are transforming how healthcare is delivered, used, and paid for. In this episode, we're going to be discussing something called Social Determinants of Health, or SDOH for short. Our expert here today will cover how to identify and address unforeseen social factors impacting both health and well being. I'd like to welcome Nebiu Abebe, Senior Vice President of Social Determinants of Health at Highmark Inc. Thank you for joining us, and let's dive into today's topic. Can you explain to the audience what social determinants of health are? Sure, Lori. Uh, first of all, happy to be here, and thank you for the opportunity. Uh, social determinants of health really are the conditions in which people live, work, play, socialize, that affect a wide range of uh, health risks and outcomes. I have to say, people living just um, a few blocks away from each other have can have vastly different health outcomes. Um, and it's because of the environment in which um, they live and socialize in. And so what we're trying to do is improve those conditions so that they can thrive. Um, we know that affordable, high quality health care is essential. Uh, no one's disputing that. But I think the focus moving forward is um, addressing those underlying root uh, factors that are um, impacting one's health and well being. So, for example, ensuring someone has access to healthy food is critically important. Good schools, affordable housing, and jobs that provide them with the resources necessary to thrive and to live a long, productive life is critically important. So, in essence, the types of conditions that um, help people um, from getting sick in the first place. And the seven key SOH domains that we're focused on as an organization is financial resource strain, social connections, safety, transportation needs, health literacy, food insecurity, and housing stability. It's just a fascinating topic, Nebiu. I'm very interested in more about SDOH and why it becomes so important to an employer or to a community strategy. Yeah, so addressing SDOH really helps to improve the overall health and well-being of our members, our patients, our employees, and the communities in which we operate in. And uh, many people don't know this, Lori, but 80% of a person's health outcomes uh, can, can be uh, impacted by the social determinants of health. And, and these are all situations where the health system may not be in a position to intervene. For example, an employer might notice an employee's productivity starts to drop after developing frequent headaches and blurred vision. Though the reality we don't see is they haven't had an eye exam in years because they can't afford vision coverage. Additionally, an employee might be overweight or obese and you know, one may think that they need to get on medication. Um, But the reality, when you peel back the onion and effectively engage uh, this employee, you may realize that the underlying factor is the fact that they're highly stressed due to their current financial situation. And so the right course of action could be a financial program or a food as medicine program that can help educate them on different types of foods um, with good amounts of nutrition that can help them cope and deal with their stress. So those are the types of um, ideas and um, initiatives that we're focused on. And so as you can see, SOH factors um, can keep individuals from getting the care they need and living the healthy lives that they truly deserve. It it certainly sounds like many of the social needs can be addressed with proactive and and, and preventive care. Um, How do you identify SDOH? That's a good question. It's the first step is to identify the need, as you as you asked. Um, and so our approach is we have a universal SDOH assessment that's comprised of 13 questions where we leverage that tool to identify the social needs of members and patients based on the seven key domains that I referenced earlier. A qu- one example is a question uh, on the assessment that asks, in the past 12 months, were you worried about whether food would run out before having money to buy more, right? A lot of people are struggling out there, especially uh, now during COVID. And um, we use that information to help connect them to local care and resources. And today we've assessed over 100,000 members and found the highest social needs are social connections, financial strain, housing, and food insecurity. 
Thank you, Nebu. I appreciate hearing more about each one of those things. As you know, my team and I work really closely with large employers in the marketplace to support them in their strategy development. You and I have talked a lot about how employers play a special role in advancing uh, the analytics and opportunities around SDOH. How does supporting employee health help employers actually carry out the strategies of their own? Very good question. Um, and so I would say social and economic challenges can have a tremendous impact on an employee's health and well-being. Social needs can often impact their lifestyle and prevent employees from being their best at work and impacting business performance, absenteeism, culture, et cetera. Identifying and addressing SGOH can also help employers lower healthcare costs by getting upstream of the root causes to what impacts their health. It makes total sense, and we look forward to continued work with you around this. Why is it important for insurance companies and healthcare providers to support SDOH? It's very important for healthcare and insurance providers to support SDOH because that's the way to control rising healthcare costs, to improve well being, and to enhance the overall patient experience. It's critically important to address both the medical, behavioral, and the social health risk factors that impact uh, one's health and well-being. And at Highmark, we are uh, committed to addressing SGOH because it's, it's who we are, it's part of our mission. And by improving the health and well-being of our members, our employees, our patients, and the communities in which we operate in, we can help create a remarkable experience for all those that we serve. Thank you, Nabiu, for joining me. And thank you to our audience for joining us to learn more about why social determinants of health are key drivers of health. To listen to an extended video version of this interview, visit us at youtube.com slash Highmark Inc. The link will be in the description of the show. I'm Lori Schoonmaker, and thanks for listening to Hitting a Higher Mark.